All right. Hello, Tyler Bryan here. Let's jump right into it. Today, I want to talk about a uh, really interesting development from um, three companies who are pretty instrumental leading companies in this idea of large language uh, models. And probably most familiar is OpenAI. Uh, OpenAI is uh, behind GPT-3 and Dolly. And for you who aren't uh, aware of those um, platforms, basically able to, they've you know, scraped as much data as they can from the web and then they are um, generating models that then can create so we've seen lots of examples with dolly where you are giving a prompt with text and then it's generating um, an image and these are becoming more and more beautiful uh, artists are upset uh, it's challenging our questions of what is our art you know what is creativity what is art what is intellectual property and so these companies are having uh, an impact on the world today and in a very um, significant way and it's this is still early um, but this is going to continue to um, have a significant impact so uh, cohere uh, a company great company here in toronto i think they're about almost moving towards 100 employees raised about 125 million dollars maybe even more than that um, with some some really talented people in that open ai and then ai 21 labs sort of collaborated together and what they did is built out these ideas for best practices around um, like, like large language model deployment and ellie here talks about Three principles, prohibit misuse, mitigate unintentional harm, and then thoughtfully collaborate with stakeholders. And I think this is, um, you know, an important collaboration that needs to happen when the uh, just the, the reach of these systems can be so significant. And we're already seeing the... Um, the applications of this famously Elon Musk left uh, OpenAI with concerns about the impact of this on the world. And there are then examples one of them, a pretty stark one about this, for example, GTP uh, 4chan, where, I mean, very interesting video, trained on three years of 4chan's politically correct, and then they used it to then populate and post on different forums. And uh, it uh, <laughs> it posted some uh, pretty vile, um, horrible um, things. And they did it in a way that some people, you know, maybe uh, thought that it was a machine, but a lot of people didn't. The, the posts were realistic enough that it sort of passed that test uh, of us thinking of it was a human. And because of the data that it had trained on, it fit right in with the kind of content that it was creating. And so that's just one example of where we're seeing these large language models have an impact. And this was obviously a, a sample uh, sort of test and in, in application, but the far reaching consequences of it are not lost on, uh, I think, my, first thing, obviously myself, uh, I'm talking about it right now, but these companies who are building these and starting to understand the scope and the scale uh, of these systems. Additionally, one of the other uh, sort of leaders in this uh, has been a, another company, and this is sort of hit, there's a bunch of them all that came around at once, and one, this is, one of them is Copy AI. And basically what it was helps you write creative content, um, uh, blog content, et cetera, et cetera. And so now you're interacting with ads that might have been created by a machine and they are, um, you know, they're then being used to persuade, um, you know, create prompts, like uh, all these machines are now helping real people generate the copy that is then persuading us to take actions online. And so there are definitely sort of ethical um, challenges to think about here. And I was trying to find this image of it, but what we've also seen is basically with these models, you can then, for example, build a website, deploy a ton of content, rank really quickly. And uh, and as a reader, you're getting on that content. It's pretty high quality content. It might be better than most of us can write content because of uh, its understanding of the web and internet. And then um, you can s deploy that, start ranking on search engines very quickly and maybe do affiliate links. You can sell products, you can uh, do, do whatever you can to sort of promote this funnel that then turns into a monetization option. The graph that I was trying to find an image of was a company that had uh, used uh, a tool like Copy AI to generate their content, and then they uh, Google recognized this. So this is the battle that's happening. Google recognized that this was search engine uh, optimized or sort of SEO produced content by these large language models, penalized the site, and so it went up to like three million people in traffic to zero the next month. So there's also this battle that is now emerging between uh, these systems like, for example, Google and search engines, where they're looking for high quality, human readable, human created content. And then these systems that are then deploying are um, having 
you know, they're, they're, they're screwing around with this system. They're screwing around with what the definition of that is. What is high quality content? What is human generated content? So there's lots of challenges that are merging. There's other uh, sort of companies that are using uh, these to generate, uh, you know, a game design, storytelling and scripts. Like there's so many different applications of these large language model, which is all you're doing is maybe giving a, te a text prompt and then it's generating an entire set of content that is passing plagiarism checks. It is, you know, generally com considered completely original, but then when I deployed at scale, it was sort of detectable that, um, that there's something going on here and that these this content is written by machines and then that's how these sites are being uh, penalized. And I would say that um, if you are connected to the, your personal accounts, um, you know, you're, you're doing a risk when you're playing around with these systems, especially in the sort of wild, wild west of it. And then uh, this could have impact on all your website properties or anything that you're doing uh, in terms of business and marketing. So um, that's my little bit of rant on that. I'll hop back into sort of what I, I was getting uh, to here is that these, these um, these companies then collaborated and uh, so you know this you know we don't know exactly how deep this goes here there's a joint there's a joint statement obviously this is uh, an important step uh, I won't open this up should I open it up I did open it up I like uh, and it's early into this process right so it's signed um, and really what they're doing this reminds me there's a parallel here when I was sort of you know in contributing being part of the psychedelic movement and it's first started to see commercialization. And so in this Twitter space, um, which was what I was sort of getting to, held, uh, sort of hosted by Percy, uh, a bunch of people on the team joined and I've got their link, so I'll share this as resources so you can follow them on Twitter and check them out. You can see that a lot of the questions here are around um, ethics and um, bias in the data and how can you avoid the um, negative uh, applications of this technology. So these are tweets before, and these are also, uh, I think really the questions around this are why these companies building these models are uh, banding together to try to figure this out. And I have no doubt that um, that there are, hey, I'll give OpenAI a fall. I have no doubt that this is gonna be continue to be uh, a challenge. And when I think back to the parallel of psychedelics, it, you know, psychedelics in, in some way are almost like a one to, it's not actually but like a one-to-one -one where um you know you are sort of accepting uh to take uh psychedelics and um there are that's so part of that is on your response your responsibility and that's a personal experience that you're having and relatively there's a lot of steps that take you to have that experience whereas with these large language models you could be interacting with this technology and really have no idea. And uh, during this conversation, that was one of sort of the concepts that um, emerged, which is, um, you know, how do we deal with the possible uh, negative consequences of this? And when we look at it, because these models are being trained on these large data sets across the web, they're filled with hate speech they're filled with um, sexual content sexual violence um, not even that just western um, you know western uh, perspective on things um, because of the proliferation of internet in in north america and um, you know uh, developed uh, countries there are a lot of perspectives that are then missing from the internet the people who are labeling these systems to help build these initial data sets they could have bias in it so when you have this much noise, when you have this much data that you're ingesting and then uh, you know putting into these models and then starting to generate things, there's a lot of risk along the way. There's a lot of unknown, and I think we you know we're very happy with the power of AI, but there's still a lot of <laughs> things that we're just un unaware of and and just don't understand with some of the output. And I've played with GPT-3, I've played with uh, Cohere, I've played with Dali, um, and y you can't interact with those systems on even a little bit of a scale and not have some sort of output that is pretty uh, pretty wonky. So I do think, again, this is a necessary step for them to take. Um, a bunch of people, so uh, Percy here, a bunch of people who are you know founders, leaders, um, actual researchers, um, developers, um, you know, for example, founders, co-founders of, of Cohere were part of this conversation on Twitter. They, it was uh, streamed and then they've now got the recording, so I'll share this link. But I think just a really interesting conversation on how, as this technology continues to be adopted, um, that it's used in, in the best way. And 
we will, uh, you know, there were a couple of quick notes that I, uh, that, I, I that I that I see here, or at least questions that were asked during this conversation. And one of the big ones was, if you're a researcher and you're trying to understand uh, how these systems work, how these algorithms work, how can you get access to that? And so one of the sort of drives that these companies are having is trying to give people access to it so they can better so they can better understand uh, the systems, and then that will then help the companies who are developing these systems uh, 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 then do it better. How does, um, and, and there's costs and problems like that. And then of course, because these are private companies, well-funded companies, they have the goals of um, profitability. They have the goals of growth, of revenue. So how does that then impact uh, the use uh, of it and the deployment of it? At some point they need to scale and start uh, selling this to companies so that they can uh, generate the revenue they needed to, in, uh, to build investor returns, um, to become sustainable. What compromises are made in that process. So I think that's a big question um, that is being asked here. And you know, there's this idea of then, oh, one of the messages or comments was that overall, these people are, most of the people interacting with the systems are good. If there's something that the error pops up, blah, 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 they will report it. They'll ask if they can use it in this way, et cetera, et cetera. But that doesn't necessarily mean uh, that everyone's a good actor. Uh, we know that from the world that we're living in today. And so then there's other mechanisms that they're trying to be built in to uh, limit this abusive or negative uh, application of these technologies, rate limits, so too many calls per minute, uh, uh, too much you know, interaction with the system, sort of uh, tamper that uh, down so that uh, there can't be too much of a consequence of that. But these are still early stages of these um, that we haven't seen play at scale. And a lot of these systems are still sort of in this beta, envir beta environment where um, not everyone can get access to it. You have to be approved for it. And then you can use it for sort of personal use, but then for us you know, to, for, to go beyond that into commercial use, there's another whole approval mechanism. And those things are really good as we start to send, sort of deploy um, uh, deploy these technologies. So uh, I think, you know, overall, these are really uh, worthwhile, interesting companies. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm inspired by it. I think that the new, there's a new level of sort of technology that is emerging of our understanding of artificial intelligence, the, this sort of vision that artif artificial intelligence and machine learning um, could be of the sort of, you know, 40 years ago, the sci-fi future of what is possible. And I think that's been really demonstrated by some of these Dolly images generated. Google's now contributing to this hugging face, some great companies uh, and organizations operating in this space. And I think there's just tremendous uh, potential here. But with tremendous potential comes tremendous risk, uh, becomes uh, tremendous responsibility. And all of this uh, is then sort of culminating into Cohere, uh, OpenAI, and AI21 Labs joining together to at least start the process of figuring how do we best deploy these large language models. So uh, I appreciate them doing this. I know that this is not easy. Anytime you're sort of uh, breaking ground uh, in, in technology and especially with this level of data, uh, this level of information, and then creating these capability, there will be challenges along the way. There will be things that are not great. And, you know, we think of, for example, uh, I think of Tesla and um, their deployment of, um, you know, uh, self-driving vehicles. No matter what, there will be errors along the way, and I think someone said it sort of darkly, but there will be deaths along the way as we move towards this. And uh, and I think everyone in the world, what we're trying to do is mitigate risk. I think these companies are trying to mitigate this risk too. And uh, again, very interesting conversation to at least start this process. I know that I'm sure they've been having ones privately. This was a public one. I hope that they do more. There's lots of ways to get involved. There's some emails that they shared here. There's a Cohere Discord channel. Uh, and I, I, you know, I recommend following some of the people who are part, speakers of this. They're leaders in this space. They're the ones shaping it. So it's good to follow, good to interact. Uh, if you have thoughts, they are open to messaging. They're trying to figure this out. Uh, and uh, um, you know, overall, um, appreciate the work that they're doing and very excited about the potential of large language models uh, and glad I was part of this conversation uh, and glad to follow these companies on what they're doing. So this has been Tyler Bryden. Thank you very much for checking this out. If you liked it, if you're watching on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. LinkedIn, send me a note. I uh, hope everything's going well and hope you have a great rest of the day. This has been Tyler Bryden. Thank you.